1031 exchanges, of course, there are there are many rules and things associated with that. We're not here to talk about that. That's for you, your accountant, your 1031 accommodator, right, to go over and make sure that you're compliant. But there can be some unique uh, intricacies to it that we've found on, on the build for rent side when it comes to when you close on new construction, what do you actually own and when do you own it? And how does that apply? Does one, one of you want to dig into that a little bit and what people should be thinking about there? When you're closing on new construction, you're actually taking title to the property. So that's one of the key things in the 1031 exchange is you have to take title to that property within that 180 day mark. 180 uh, days of when? Of when you closed on the departure property. So the property that you sold, you have 180 days to actually close on the property that you're acquiring. You have 45 days to identify a property. How deep do we want to go in here? Because I don't want to get myself uh, in trouble. Well, no, this you, is good, though. Disclaimer. And it gets okay. a little bit tricky when you're buying a new construction multifamily. Does there because have to be a CFO in order to 1031 exchange into it? No. No. Because you you're taking take title. title. Yeah. So you're taking yeah. title. And again, you're having the value. So whatever you sold your property for, less some commissions and title fees, that's no. what you have to replace it with. So usually most of our investors are maybe buying two or three or four more of our properties because they can take the land value when they close and then some of the construction, depending on how far we're going to get into it. So that's one of those things we always say to people, if you're going to do 1031 into something that we do, talk with us first, let's chat with it because you're not going to be able to sell something for 850 and buy a, a fourplex from us for 900 and fulfill that exchange within 180 days. It doesn't work. That doesn't work that way. But we can accommodate exchanges, we're just gonna have to split the money out a little bit because you can divvy out how you do your money. I want 30% here. I want 20% here. I want 50% on this other property. Well, well, as I understand it, it's, it's ultimately about proving, like we said, what you owned and when you owned it. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, some people take kind of take a gamble. They say, I'm going to, to buy this property for a million dollars. Right. And even though it took 18 months to build it, I'm still claiming the whole million because I'm going to get audited maybe in three years and good luck proving what I owned and when I owned it. But th that's actually on you. You've got to prove it. So uh, th I think they're probably just planning on saying, here's my closing documents and what I paid. Mm -hmm. I yeah. don't know if that holds water or not. And I'd prefer to never find out. Right. But the best part being is, well, take what you paid. And if you've got copies of approved loans and vertical budgets, you could probably any reasonable person. And, and by the way, like 50 CPAs have agreed with us on this. You could subtract that vertical budget from your overall price and get to a land value that way. Could you not? Yeah, you could. Yeah. So I'll have at least the land value. And out of the 10 years we've been doing this, have we ever had anyone that's done a 1031 exchange into new construction? I don't know yet. My client, I haven't personally, mm -hmm. and I've done it. I've had some clients. They have not been audited yet. What and I think guys? another thing that can help as a safety net for them, if they want to make sure they play by the rules, we obviously have bank draws, right? So if you're kind yeah. of trying to get as much out of it as you can, we have monthly bank draws. So you'll be able to say, okay, so here was my land, but I've had five draws that equaled 150,000. So at this point, my property was worth X because of yeah. the land value and the draws. Well, and I think you're talking about what I've heard referred to as a build to suit exchange. Correct. And I've heard it called a bunch of other things. There's so many kinds out there and I never know. We should get a, a really good accommodator on the show. I mean, in this case, you say um, the, the accommodator creates a temporary entity that takes the title. Right? So you sold your exit property on January 1st. So by the letter of the law, you have 180 days. That's June 1st, right? Roughly there's right, yeah, whatever February ruins everything. Yep. So, um, but let's just call it June 1st. So you have until then to close on the replacement property. So in new construction, the rationale being, well, what if I closed on dirt on February one? So now I have five more months to do construction and, and, and build value into this property above and beyond the actual land value. The title company has to take take title through that. It's called an EAT. I can't remember what that stands for. Like an exchange asset, something like that. There's an entity, a specific kind they use. 
And so then you come in towards the end of May and you actually close at that point. That's when Chase Levitt shows up on title because Chase Levitt exited title in January, shows up again on the new property at the end of May. He's going to take that that land value and add up all those bank draws mm-hmm. that Sherrod had just talked about. And that's the value he claims, right? And that's that that holds water. But um, anyone want to tackle the problem that can create on financing? Anyone feeling lucky? 